In the name of Jesus, good evening. Good evening. Merry Christmas. And welcome to the Lord's house. Um, as part of the closing of the service, we would like to light some candles. Hopefully you've got some of those. Uh, the light will come, the ushers will come out and dip the unlit candles into the lit candles so that we don't drip wax. It's the best way to do that. Hold on to those till the end of the service then. We have a reading of the Christmas story that's gonna happen up front here. And we've got some helpers that are gonna come with that. So we're excited about that this evening. Tomorrow, we're gonna have a little bit of abbreviated Sunday schedule. We're just gonna do our regular church, uh, festive church service at 10. You're all invited to join us for that. Are there any other announcements or special prayer requests we need to put forth this evening? Yes? What time do we usually do church? Nine o'clock. Don't listen to what I say. Listen to what I mean. Thank you. Be here at nine. Yes. That gives you plenty of time to cook. And some of us have to catch an airplane, so uh, thank you. Okay. It's nice to know that people are listening. 
<laughs> Thank you. Um, and we all need mercy and grace. That's what tonight is about. Um, we begin with uh, a song about the angels' song, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Amen. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. On this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you, 
And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. You may be seated. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, you make this most holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that as we have known the mysteries of that light on earth, we may also come to the fullness of his joy in heaven through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading for the Nativity of our Lord on Christmas Eve is from the ninth chapter of Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as they are glad when they divide the spoil. For the yoke of his burden and the staff for his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For every boot of the tramping warrior in battle tumult and every garment rolled in blood will be burned as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. On the throne of David 
and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. To us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. Is the children. She lived long years ago, but such a wonderful thing happened to her that we remember her and love her still. appeared to Mary. You are blessed among women, the angel said, for you shall have a son whom you shall name Jesus. He shall be called the Son of God, and his kingdom shall never end. I am glad to serve the Lord, said Mary. May it be as you have said. Then the angel left her. Mary married a good man from Nazareth. His name was Joseph, and he was a carpenter by trade. When Joseph had to go up from Nazareth, to Bethlehem in Judea to pay his taxes in his father's town, Mary went with him. It was a long, weary journey for them both. one innkeeper, seeing Mary's weariness and need, showed them to a stable full of warm, sweet hay. There Mary brought forth her son, and she wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in the manger, since there was no room for them in the inn.
There were in that same country shepherds in the fields keeping watch over their flocks by night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them in shining glory and they were all afraid. But the angel said to them, there is nothing to fear. I come to bring you news of great joy which shall come to all people. For a child is born this day in Bethlehem, a savior who is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign to you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly the sky was full of angels, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. When the angels disappeared into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing which the Lord has made known to us. They hurried to the town and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. And afterwards, the shepherds told everyone they met about the child. Now, when Jesus was still a baby, three wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. Where is he that is born king of the Jews, they asked, for we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When they had heard the king, the wise men departed. Behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it stood over the place where the child lay. And when they saw the star, the wise men rejoiced and were glad. And when they came into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother and bowed down and worshipped him. They opened their treasures and laid before him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. Being warned by God that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country another way. The child was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was born. And the child grew and became strong in spirit and full of wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him.
The epistle is from the second chapter of Titus. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession, who are zealous for good works. This is the word of the Lord. I invite you to stand. Can I get you to mute that number three mic, Erwin? Thank you. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory, Glory to you. you, Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each one to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth, 
And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for him in the inn. And in that same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. You may be seated. of great joys that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. This is our text. Every word of God is important and has its meaning and purpose and transformative power because it is God's word. But there are two words in this text that really seem to turn the story. 
If you were a historian, you might pick out the words in the city of David. That's a historic place. And it's an important thing that there was a real time and place for where the Christ was born. But this story is more than history. If you're into drama, it, perhaps it would be, you'll find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Why would a baby be in a manger? It seems a poor place for a baby to be. What's going on? And yet this story is more than drama. And if you're an ethicist, perhaps you'd be focused on those words with whom he is well pleased, or peace on earth. And yet this story is more than ethics. What really changes the story, what makes the story more than history, more than drama, more than ex, uh, good works and ethics is the gospel, the charisma. What makes this story transformative is the, the good news, which has those words in it, unto you. The shepherds were out in the field keeping watch on their flocks by night. It wasn't the best place to be. It wasn't the most comfortable place to be. These weren't the people of high reputation. Perhaps when the angels came, they would say, Oh, you don't want to talk to us. Announcements of this value would be for the king to hear or those important people that are in the town. Go tell them. But the angel does not allow that to happen. He takes these shepherds and he transforms them with these words, for unto you, And these shepherds find themselves moving beyond history to the story of redemption. These shepherds find themselves moving beyond drama to the passion of his Christ. They move beyond ethics to the righteousness of God. Because this Savior, this Christ who is born, is for you. You want some good news? It wasn't just for the shepherds. The angel said this in the text itself. Great joy that will be for all the people. That's you. That's me. The Savior who came into this world came for you. more than a history lesson or ethics or drama. That's gospel. God, who lives in glory, who created all things, came for you. do that, he had to humble himself, and he did that all the way to being a child laid in a manger. It's not just hay. It's the gospel for you. 
So the multitude of the heavenly hosts break in and they sing glory to God in the highest. What looks so simple and downtrodden and poor is proclaimed glorious. Because God has come among us. God has come to save us. God has come to forgive our sins. Because, to be honest, sometimes we don't pay attention to his story. Sometimes we get tired of life and lose our passion. And we get more consumed with our own problems than being people who please the Lord. So join me. Join the shepherds. Hear those words. For you, the Christ, for you, your sin is forgiven. Your peace is restored. Your God has come. And he, he brings peace and joy and salvation. Praise the Lord. Amen. Almighty God, by the incarnation of your eternal Son, you reveal that you are love. Give us true faith in Christ and his promise that by his conception, virgin birth, holy life, sacrificial death, and victorious resurrection, our sins are forgiven and we are yours. Fill us with joy and lead us to proclaim your glad tidings to all people. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, by his birth in human flesh, your dear son took his place in the family of Mary and Joseph. Bless the families of our church and our country, that men and women would live faithfully as husband and wives, loving and caring for their children and nurturing them in the grace of baptism and in all the truth of your word. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, your son, born in Bethlehem, is the son of David and the Lord of David, to whom every knee shall bow. Look upon those you have placed in authority and grant that they would govern in wisdom and justice. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, you love us and sent your son to be the propitiation for our sins. Strengthen us to love one another as you have mercy upon all who are poor and troubled so perfect your love in us that we would gladly be your instruments of help in time of need lord in your mercy Amen. holy lord in the birth of your son you have visited and redeemed your people continue to visit those who are lonely sick recovering or near death let your presence be a comfort to them and give them perseverance until the time you grant healing, relief, deliverance, and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We thank you, dear Lord, for the saints who received your blessing of righteousness in Christ and now stand in the most holy place before your throne. Preserve us by your grace in the holiness of Christ, that we too may dwell in your light and life for eternity, through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
Master, why don't we call him Lord? Let's all call him Lord. Mary, Mary, what you gonna name that baby? What you gonna name that holy baby? We like sheep. Please stand. Lord, teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.
Great. Merry Christmas. Oh, thanks for coming. Yeah. Having those kids up front, does that make you have memories? <laughs> Good. Merry Christmas. They'll take them anywhere, I guess. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Thanks for coming. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I'm glad all the snow and ice disappeared. Oh, so am I. <laughs>